there's been a lot of speculation about where to get some of the rarest unique items in Diablo 4. Items like the Grandfather, Harlequin Crest, and Andariels are all super rare, powerful, in some cases build defining, and just really awesome. And no one knew where to get them. Some people thought you had to beat Uber Lilith, others thought maybe you had to defeat the Cow King, and a few people even speculated that they didn't exist. But speculate no more because Blizzard has actually confirmed where they drop and how to get them. So here we have a tweet from Adam Jackson, the lead class designer for Diablo 4 at Blizzard Entertainment, where he clears up how to get the rarest unique items in the game. They drop from level 85 plus enemies, meaning you want to be level 85 or higher to get them out in the open world. However, if you want to increase your odds, get them as soon as possible, even if you're not quite level 85, based on what he says here, if you go into a stronghold where enemies are higher level than yourself, they should drop around level 83 since strongholds are plus two to plus three levels. If you go into a nightmare dungeon where the enemies are level 85, even if you are not, they should be able to drop. You can get them anywhere that you can get a regular unique and they drop at 820 item power, which is really good news because it would suck to get one of these rare items, especially something like Grandfather or Doombringer, a weapon only to have it be like 760 item power Missing out on a lot of stats would make it almost not worth using in comparison to a normal weapon. I know that these unique effects are super awesome and in some cases overpowered. Maybe they would still be usable, but this way you don't have to worry about it at all, with 820 being the normal maximum and only a few extremely rare drops being able to exceed that. Finally, there are six different items and they're really rare. So what this means is you're still probably not going to get one of these items as a drop, at least not unless you're farming for a long time or you're extremely lucky. However, if you're worried, am I doing something wrong? Maybe I'm preventing myself from getting these as drops. Don't worry, as long as you're fighting level 85 plus enemies, you're fine. This means you shouldn't go back and do things that aggressively lower the level of content you fight, but that probably wasn't the best way to get EXP, gold, or items anyway, and so if you want to get them, what's the best way? Probably just blasting nightmare dungeons. Kill more enemies, higher level enemies, and eventually it'll drop, or maybe it won't. Now, I do want to get into one more important topic regarding these items and chase items in general. Before I do though, if you enjoyed the gameplay from the start, that's my chain lightning sword, which I just released a guide on, and I'm going to be testing Flamewall next, so do be sure to get subscribed. That way you won't miss my thoughts on Flamewall. Maybe leave a like while you're down there. But now, let's take a look at chase items and what place they have in Diablo 4. Right now, we have six chase items. Two unique swords, the Doombringer and the Grandfather, both of which have really powerful effects for, well, builds that use swords. The Grandfather increases your critical strike damage, and it's a kind of massive range, 60 to 100%. The interesting part about the Grandfather is this is a multiplicative increase. So let's say you have 250% increased critical strike damage by default. If you equip the Grandfather at maximum roll, it doesn't go from 250 to 350, which would be about a 40% DPS increase. It goes from 250 to 500, doubling your DPS. Also interestingly, the Grandfather ignores durability loss, which not only saves you a little bit of gold, but means that if you get too beat up in a dungeon, your weapon won't break. You might be running around naked, but hey, at least you got a cool sword. The Doombringer, on the other hand, has a proc, which slows enemies, reduces their damage done, and deals a little bit of shadow damage. It's a lucky hit, and while the item is certainly still strong, it's definitely not nearly as strong as something like the Grandfather. Then we have the Ring of Starless Skies and Andariel's Visage. Andariel's is really cool because it's one of the only ways to get lifesteal in the entire game. Lifesteal is a great way to heal up, it means that you don't really need to spam your potions constantly. And even more interestingly, whatever doesn't kill you probably won't hurt you at all. Tired of tanking poisons? Well, just lifesteal it up. It certainly won't help with your defenses, you're going to need a relatively high amount of damage reduction to not straight up get one shot, especially if you're pushing nightmare dungeons. However, for things like open world content where you aren't going to be pushing, you don't have to worry about one shots, lifesteal is going to make you feel pretty much completely invincible. On the other hand, Ring of Starless Skies is tied to core skills. So if you're playing a class that has a core skill build, 
Casting the core skill consecutively reduces the resource cost of the next core skill by between 8 and 12% up to a maximum of 40, meaning after 4 or 5 casts, you get a 40% mana cost reduction. Now my guess is that this stacks multiplicatively with the normal mana cost reduction, meaning you pay about 40% of a normal mana cost in total, though if it stacks additively that's completely insane. I know it's technically not always mana cost, I'm just using sorcerer, it could be energy, it could be rage, it could be... Uh, whatever unholy magic that necromancers use. Plus, when it comes to the Ring of Starless Skies, lucky hit chance, crit chance, crit damage, and core skill damage aren't bad stats to have. Then we've got the Melted Heart of Stelig, an insanely good defensive item where you drain resource for every 1% of life you would have lost instead. So when you're getting hit, you have a way to completely negate damage, though I'm assuming if you take more damage than you have resource, the overkill is still dealt to your health. Plus, even if you don't want to use it for the defenses, many builds and many skills gain bonuses based on your maximum resource. So the more of it you have, the more damage you deal. Bone Spirit on Necromancer is a perfect example of this. And finally, the Harlequin Crest, the be-all, end-all chase item that everyone absolutely wants because it gives, well, insane bonuses. Plus four ranks to all skills. Not only does this open up an absolutely massive variety of things to customize into, but additionally, plus four ranks and skills increases all the damage you do, reduces all the cooldowns. Quite frankly, this item is amazing. Not only that, but it has resource generation, max life, and cooldown reduction, meaning that for most classes, it has three incredibly good rolls on top of all the other insane stats that it offers. Oh, and you get a free damage reduction as well, because why not make up for a defensive legendary aspect by just building it into your unique item? If I was to pick any of these items to get, it would absolutely be the Harlequin Crest. Now, as someone who's played Sorceress almost exclusively, I wouldn't want Doombringer or Grandfather because my class can't use them. Now, I don't know if they actually drop for Sorcerers, but if they do, that would be really, really disappointing. I guess at that point I'd have to reroll Rogue, Barb, or someone else and just kind of be sad. And this brings me to an important discussion. Should these items be obtainable? Or are chase uniques good for the game? Now, I've played a lot of different ARPGs and a lot of different games in general. I remember farming for extremely rare items back in RuneScape, or doing Ice Crown Citadel runs for a chance at the Lich King's Mount Invisible which for some reason no one ever saw. I also remember the early days of Diablo 3, where whenever I saw an Echoing Fury, I wondered, is this going to be the one? Is that going to be the perfect item? So yes, I think that having chase items in a game is not only healthy, but it's required. Because if you can get every item in the game, then no item is special. There's no sense of accomplishment or achievement for something that you don't have to work for. And while I do think you should absolutely be given the tools that you need to progress and play your character through the content, in Diablo 4 as an example, you shouldn't be struggling for the gear that you need to level up to 100, clear nightmare dungeons around your level, complete world events, fight world bosses, all that stuff. However, if you want something truly insane, the icing on the cake, yes, it should absolutely be rare. Number one, that gives the most hardcore players a good reason to come back season after season, and keep grinding. Number two, for someone playing more casually, who's never going to be grinding until they get a specific rare unique drop, it makes for a really cool story. For me personally, I've gotten several of these rare items in games over the years. I remember, for example, in Path of Exile, I was just doing a random strand map, then I dropped a Mage Blood, one of the rarest items in the game. I wasn't farming for it, I certainly didn't expect it. In fact, I already had one equipped, because I'd farmed the currency and bought it. But the Mage Blood dropping was different. It was special. I still have that Mage Blood, and I'm going to keep it forever. Not because it's a Mage Blood, not because it's valuable or powerful, but because it was a special moment that I'd like to remember. So having rare chase items not only gives people something to aspire for, but it makes for some cool stories. And thus, I think they're really healthy to have for the game. Though I can also see where some players might be frustrated or disappointed by items like this existing especially if you came from Diablo 3, where everything was obtainable. You could get any legendary item, any set item with relative ease, and even the rarest ones weren't that hard to get as a primal ancient if you're playing throughout a season.
But I also think that's part of why Diablo 3 held most people's attention for a weekend. Because once you got those things, your build didn't change. It was just about changing the number. Sure, a primal ancient Yang's recurve was much better than a regular one, but it was still a Yang's recurve. There was no unique effect there. It's not like it changed how you played the game or how you built your character just because the number got bigger. And that's something that I really like about all of these items. They are, in one way or another, and to one degree of success or another, build changing. Not build defining in the sense that you need them, but build changing in the sense that it feels different after you've obtained them. You might make different decisions in your gearing. For example, getting more crit damage and less vulnerable damage if you have a grandfather. Maybe not worrying so much about recovery if you have an Andarials or being able to do some really cool stuff with super low cooldowns if you get a Harlequins. I also spent a little bit of time looking through the comments on Adam Jackson's tweet, and I found that a lot of people agreed. Many people were saying, chase items are good for the game, that it's good to have something to aspire to. I also think it's a good thing, because if a game's willing to hand me everything relatively quickly, to give me the world on a silver platter, then I feel no sense of accomplishment, and no real desire to go back. Sure, not everyone plays games for a sense of challenge, and there are certainly games that I play where I'm not doing it to be challenged, I just want to chill, relax, and have a good time, or experience a new immersive world. But ARPGs have always had that somewhat competitive undercurrent. You were farming for things in Diablo 2. You were farming for things way back in Diablo 1. ARPGs are a game about grind, and if there's nothing to grind for, then a lot of people are going to lose interest. This is, I think, why so many people play Diablo 3 for a weekend and play Path of Exile for a thousand hours. Though the two are very different games and quite honestly attract a different kind of player in a lot of cases. But I also think those special moments, those stories, aren't to be underestimated. They're things that you're going to remember, something you'll tell your friends. And so I'm curious, what rare items have you gotten or tried to grind for in a game? Something that you did not because it was easy, but because it was hard. And in doing something hard, you felt a deep, meaningful sense of reward. Be sure to share some of those stories down in the comments below. And of course, before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. Because even $1 a month is way more impactful than watching every ad on every video I make. Links down below. If you're looking for something else to watch after this, maybe check out my Arc Lash Guide, Ice Shards Guide, or Chain Lightning Guide. I know this video is a little bit late, the news came out last night. I'd been working on a big project, the Chain Lightning Guide, and I didn't want to rush through that just to get this video out. But hopefully better late than never. So thanks for watching, I hope you liked the short news update along with my thoughts on chase items, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.